so today I wanted to talk about these two recent cases of AI being used in uh, film. One of them is a commercial, Under Armour commercial, and the other one is a movie, I don't think it's out yet, called Late Night with the Devil. A couple years ago, when AI started to spring up with ChatGPT and MidJourney, it was initially scary. Like, I remember typing into ChatGPT, write a script, and it just, like, spit out a short screenplay. It sucked, it was basic, but... The format was there, the words were there, the dialogue was there, there wasn't much of a story, and that's kind of, I guess, the point of this is at what point does creativity ever really come into play? I guess original creativity, because AI is creative. I remember seeing a lot of filmmakers that I follow using Midjourney to create these new images and share them on their Instagrams. And it was, of course, like a new piece of work. Then as research started to come out about AI, it started to point towards the fact that these AI softwares aren't creating anything new. They're leveraging pieces of work that already exist to create things. And it's an interesting conversation that I don't feel like I have all the answers to or have done all the research on, but I wanted to talk about these two cases specifically because this was part of the writer's strike. This was part of the actor's strike. Maybe there will be more crew strikes. The first one is this Under Armour ad. I watched it. It seem it definitely, when you watch it, the criticism is that it's based on real footage. It definitely seems like it has real footage, of course. You know, like, I think it's Anthony Joshua that looks like it's legitimate footage and it is and then the initial criticism was that the cinematographer the original one that shot that footage wasn't credited so it says right here advertisers horrified by under armor's ai generated commercial this whole thing is soulless bad sport american sportswear brand under armor has come under fire for releasing an ai powered ad that recycled footage made for previous commercials without giving full credit raising concerns over whether the ai technology was being used to paper over contributions made by human artists in an instagram post walker called it the world's first ai powered sports commercial and he claims it mixes human created footage and visual effects with ai video ai photo and advances an AI voiceover. It's impressively edited, but it's also obvious when the ad's switching between grittier human photography and weirdly smooth AI images. We're in the future. Defining the next phase of cinema is an active experiment. Yeah, that's interesting. And I, I one of the points I wanted to bring up here is when AI started to take off and people started to accept it, specifically maybe chat GPT and things, people were saying like, Think about the calculator, how the calculator changed doing math equations. So when I'm thinking about this stuff, I wonder how accessible, like really dope visual effects will become to the average filmmaker. But I also wonder, you know, back when Spielberg and and the VFX crew was making Jurassic Park, and I wonder what role computers played in that. Like obviously it's human creativity, obviously it's people doing a lot more work, but I just wonder the difference between how they used to do it, painters drawing paintings that they would overlay on in the film, or this new computer technology that really did surprise people and advance the technology. So that's almost kind of what he's claiming here, that the AI is advancing the next phase of cinema. And I agree. I mean, there's no denying it. So this is the crucial part to this whole thing, and where I am frustrated and also... It's just, how will you ever know if things are properly credited? But let me get into it. Though Walker claims that art in the AI age will still belong to the creatives, it turns out that he initially didn't give proper credit for his ad, which made significant use of footage shot for a previous Under Armour commercial two years ago by another director. Deepening the drama, that director, Gustav Johansson, personally but gently called out Walker under his ad. Cool film, but all the stuff with the athlete is shot by Andre Shematov and from a previous commercial I did. And here's a crucial point that really comes down to like the criticism of this action specifically. And he's right here, AI has nothing to do with it really. It's more how you choose to label and promote your work. It's even more important when times are shifting. And that's true, like we've heard examples of Tarantino using sequences from old films, but he'd recreate them. And he'd even give shout outs later. I mean, it, it, when you do something like that, it's very different. You're not drawing specifically, you're not taking the specific work. But in this case, 
they're literally leveraging something that has been shot before. That's what the AI softwares are doing, I think. And they're not giving credit. And here we get into this set designer, Andrea Huelsi. I definitely butchered that. This whole thing is soulless, from the use of AI to the other use of people's work and crediting yourself, wrote set designer Andrea. If you don't honor and protect others in this industry, you're part of the problem. Yeah, so wrapping up this bit on the Under Armour commercial, I'm worried, you know, because as a filmmaker entering the industry, you know, many jobs go into these commercials. You know, you have grips that work on the lighting, gaffers, set designers, props, makeup, cinematographers, whole camera department, um, you know, graphic artists. There's so many things that go into it. And at a certain point, we're getting to the to the level where a lot of that is going to be directed by somebody typing in a prompt. And a lot of jobs are going to be eliminated, obviously, because and how could they not, you know, it's going to save money. You could do something that really wows people with these weird visuals, crazy things that people haven't seen, and you can do it cheap with a smaller crew. So we just have to hope that the filmmakers that do these things, the artists that get in control of these projects, continue to have ethics in what they do with the work. You know, I, it, there's sometimes there's no denying the advancement in technology, but can you at least have a solid head on your shoulders when it comes to crediting that technology and crediting the work that comes before it? And that's going to be the big underlying question is the companies that that don't want to spend a lot of money on their work and the artists who want to make great things but don't have the budgets anymore, don't have the crews anymore and have to use these new tools, where does where does that meet? And um, I guess we'll see. So another case is this movie, The Late Night with the Devil. And uh, I haven't seen it. I don't think it's out yet. The movie stars David Dasmalchian. Hopefully I said that right, but uh, the dude is a great actor. And he's a late night TV host looking to save his show with a Halloween special that goes comically off the rails. So it look, looks exciting. It looks like it could be like a pretty fun movie. So this is the first one in my mind that has started to really get traction for AI being in the film. You know, because this is a lot of what the writers and the, the actors went on strike about. So the movie was getting solid reviews at South by Southwest and... Then somebody came out and put like a letterbox review that says like, listen, there's AI all over this. Don't let this be the start of accepting this shit in your entertainment. The AI generated images in question play as interstitials throughout the film's fictional live TV broadcast. Among them is an illustration of a skeleton dancing in the middle of a pumpkin patch and the occasional we'll be right back message. And then there is a statement that came out from the Late Night with the Devil's co-writers and co-directors Cameron Cairns and Colin Cairns, which confirmed the use of AI. Uh, the statement is, in conjunction with our amazing graphics and production design team, all of whom worked tirelessly to give this film the 70s aesthetic we had always imagined, we experienced with AI for three still images, which we edited further and ultimately appear as very brief interstitials in the film. We feel incredibly fortunate to have had such a talented and passionate crew, crew and producing team go above and beyond to help bring this film to life. We can't wait for everyone to see it for themselves this weekend. This one isn't as bad as the Under Armour commercial. Um, I don't know. I might regret saying that. Yeah, it looks like I'm reading here. Marvel's Secret Invasion used AI to create its unnerving opening credits. Earlier in 2024, viewers criticized True Detective Night Country for background posters that looked AI-generated. All this push comes in the wake of Hollywood's WGA and SAG strikes, during which both unions fought for protections against AI being used to replace their work. So those cases, you know, artwork in the background of sets being generated by AI, is that where we start to draw a line? You know, there used to be a job, there might still be a job on many big Hollywood films um, as like an on-set painter that was there just to paint anything in the background that needed painting. There was production designers that probably hand-created or used Photoshop to create interesting posters to put on the walls, um, artwork, fake books. And so yeah, AI will do that stuff much easier because the focus isn't on it. It might be blurry in the background. It might not ever become an integral part of the story, but it helped builds out the world. But that used to be somebody's job, and it used to take up a certain amount of time. It'll still be somebody's job, but how much time will it take up? How, how many people will need to do it? It's an interesting conversation, and 
I don't know where I stand on it all yet because on one hand, you can't fight the changing of technology. Like this is just what it is and it's going to be used in film and television. Um, things have always advanced. You've always had to keep up with the way things go. But I do worry about the ethics of it. Who loses the jobs? You know, like who's really benefiting from it and in what way? Like artists have always struggled financially. This is going to make that worse. This is going to cut jobs. This is going to change the landscape of Hollywood forever, which is already up in the air over a number of different things. And so I'm interested to see how all of this develops. This is definitely not the last we're going to talk about it. It's going to come out probably in some big ways soon. It's definitely interesting to be a filmmaker in these times because part of me feels like I need to jump on the train or get left behind. Also, part of me feels like I need to fight for human creativity because that's what, at the end of the day, really matters. And that's what, at the end of the day, will always shine through. Even if AI does completely take over, their movies will suck. Um, hopefully. Yeah, hopefully. Uh, we'll see. <laughs> but, um, but just to be final here, I definitely don't support the Under Armour situation. The director seems like he sucks. The I, Under Armour sucks for doing that. But this film is different. And I don't know why it's different. An ad is kind of meant to convince you to be a part of something, I guess, to to buy Under Armour clothes, to attach you to the brand. Ads always come off a little bit gross in and of itself. A film is an experience, and it's meant to make you feel something. And AI art makes you feel something. And so I'm, I haven't seen this movie yet. I don't know the way in which it's used. So I don't know where I stand on it, but... I probably will watch this movie just to see how it all plays out. But yeah, I don't know. I guess we'll see to which point AI gets control of our art in the future. Hopefully not a lot. But yeah, until next time.